So good day everyone. In this presentation, I will be talking about the sargassum genus of brown algae. First up, we have the outline for this discussion, starting with the hierarchical classification of sargassum and then onto its phylogeny. We will then talk about genus sargassum as a distinct taxon and why it was chosen as my subject. From that, we will talk about the golden tide phenomenon and finally, a brief parade of some of the representative species in the country. The catalog of life listed Sergasum under Kingdom Chromista, Phylum Ocrophyta, Class Phaeophyceae, Order Fucales, Family Sergasaceae, and was first described by C. Augard in 1820. Proceeding to the phylogeny of Sergasum, we will be looking at a phylogenetic tree from the 2018 study conducted by Yip et al which was constructed using concatenated data from the Z study and from previous studies in 2008 and 2009. Note that this phylogenetic tree is constructed using data from Singapore, so it would be good to keep in mind that the resulting tree is more or less a representative of the local algal flora. In this section, I will only point out three of the main findings manifested in this phylogenetic tree. First, we will look at the outgroup portion, then to these two major groupings, and lastly, to these distinct groupings. So in the outgroup, we will see genus Sargasopsis, which is the sister group of Sargassum. This means that among all the genera under the family Sargassaceae, it is most related phylogenetically to this genus. It was previously grouped within the Sargassum genus and was later on transferred to its taxon um, through the analysis of morphological and molecular data. It is also not found in the Philippines, unlike Sargassum, and is mainly found in Australia and New Zealand. Two distinct clades were also identified and were presented as subgenera under the Sargassum genus. These are Bactrophicus and Sargassum. Under Sargassum subgenera Sargassum, six morphotaxa were retrieved and are listed below. Note that Sargassum confer granuliferum does not form a reciprocally uh, monophyletic group because it is not phylogenetically distinct. Sargassum sp, on the other hand, or sargassum species, are those that are not assigned specific epithets. Now, we are, when we are talking about morphotaxa, we are referring to a classification that is based on morphology alone. The number of morphotaxa present within this genus, therefore, reflects how morphologically diverse this group is. This would be an important point later on. Now, let us talk about the genus itself. So, what is sargassum? Sargassum is a genus of brown algae that is typically not attached to any substrate. This means that it is freely floating. Now, a little fun fact, there is a sea in the Atlantic named after the genus Sargassum, the Sargasso Sea. This is not only because Sargassum is significantly prolific in this area, but also because it harbors a species of Sargassum that are holopelagic or those that reproduce vegetatively on the high seas, unlike other seaweeds which reproduce and begin life on the ocean floor. Sargassum is highly polymorphic as a group, thus there is a wide spectrum as to how it can be described. But generally speaking, there are some characteristics that unify the members of this genus. So first is monopodial branching. When we say monopodial branching, we are referring to the blades being spirally arranged on the main axis. Now, the blades are simple, linear, and may have acute or ovate apices, and there is a significant number of species that have serrated margins. The vesicles are normally present and are filled with gas, keeping the front afloat by providing buoyancy. Alginic acid is also contained within the thallus of a sargassum individual, like all other brown algae. Cross-section of mature leaves or blades shows cryptostomata with osteol and protruding paraphysis. On to the basic morphology of sargassum, I'm simply going to show these two figures showing the basic appearance of a sargassum indiv individual. Note the cryptostomata across the talus and the air bladders scattered in distinct locations. Now, choosing to feature sargassum in this presentation was primarily a result of personal familiarity as I frequently encountered them on beach trips. However, I believe that the information that I gathered while browsing for a subject for this presentation also influenced my decision. For instance, this frequency is reflected in the fact that the Philippine archipelago houses one of the largest assemblages of sargassum species in the Pacific Basin. 
The 1987 catalog of benthic marine algae authored by Silva listed over 70 species of sargassum and in 2012, Ganzon Fortes listed 73. There are around 400 sargassum species all in all, so that is approximately 18.25% of all sargassum species present in the marine macrobenthic algal flora in the country. However, this study only covered records from 1800 to 1999, and as far as my research went, no other formal catalogs were produced after this. This reflects the taxonomic struggle in our country, which is also one of the reasons why I wanted to feature this genus. To illustrate, Trono Jr. reported only 28 species, 13 of which are not assigned specific epithets. And in 2013, only 8 morphotypes were um, listed and 2 were unidentified. Thus, little usable information on the taxonomy of the genus is available to date. This was attributed to the morphological variability evident within the group. Adding to that, most reports were mainly based on studying dried and incomplete materials, making records and reports about sargassum questionable, making it even harder to conduct further studies. This poses a significant problem that requires attention, especially since the sargassum species serve ecologically important roles. For example, young sea turtles swim through the open ocean via the Gulf Stream, where the young sea turtle is very much exposed to predation. The sargassum species that freely float along this superhighway provide shelter to the young turtle, uh, protecting it from such harm and chaperoning it across the ocean. Also, because, because of the massive beds that these algae form on the high seas is stretch, is stretching miles across, they are able to provide habitat to various other creatures such as crabs, shrimps, and fishes. This includes the sargassum fish that has evolved features that mimic the appearance of sargassum algae. The sargassum fish uses this to its advantage when hunting its prey. It has also recently been known, unfortunately, to cause serious problems to human health, tourism, fisheries, and shoreline ecology through its rapid proliferation. For example, as ironic as it is, the same algae that protected the young sea turtle from being preyed upon earlier are the ones that are now threatening the population of sea turtles as the sargassum volume piles up and completely blocks their nesting site. But over the course of the years, various strategies that aim to draw out opportunities from the sargassum problem surface. This includes using sargassum as a source for biogas, organic fertilizers, bioplastics, and many more. Algae overall are very sustainable to use as raw materials since they have the ability to proliferate without fertilizers or any anthropogenic intervention, which are themselves usual causes of certain environmental problems. This should especially be emphasized in the case of sargassum, given its uh, abundance and wide global and local distribution. Moving on, we have a representative species found across the Philippines. Only five species are going to be briefly introduced in the following section, and the basis for this selection is their relative cover in the country, according to the report provided by Trono Jr. in 1992. Only a summary of their description by Trono Jr. is provided. So first we have Sargassum silicosum, which is a bioecious algae with the female receptacles being uniquely triquetrous and strongly twisted. Next we have Sargassum elisiforium. This species is differentiated from the first species by the more tapered leaves of its primary branches and non-twisting triquetrous and bracteolated female receptacular branches. It is one of the morphotaxa found in Singapore that was discussed earlier. Next, we have Sargassum oligocystum, which is characterized by large blades with very short stalks and lumpy female vesicles. Next, we have Sargassum polycystum, which is also found in the Singapore algal flora as one of the morphotaxa that was mentioned earlier. And lastly, we have Sargassum cristaefolium, which is differentiated from the other species with duplicated leaves, but it's horizontally attached leaves and spherical vesicles with toothed lateral wings. These five selected species display the morphological variability that has been mentioned earlier. The wide range of morphological features within this genus makes it a potential hotspot for future studies. So that is all. Um, I hope you learned, uh, enjoyed learning about genus sargassum as much as I did.